happy St David's Day. How is Lent going? We've made it a third of the way through, well done us. Have you perhaps followed St David's example and limited yourself to just bread and water? Or perhaps like me, you've allowed yourself the odd dispensation here and there. Perhaps you never got round to deciding what to give up in the first place and think it's a bit late now. Well, our readings today challenge us to keep going, to persevere, not just in Lent, but in the whole of our Christian life. Lent, of course, is a sort of intense training programme for the Christian life, a time in which we give up some of the world's pleasures for a time to devote more of our time to prayer and more of our efforts to charity. A time, in short, to conform ourselves more closely to Christ as we seek to follow the way of the cross. And as we contemplate our readings from Matthew and Philippians, I invite you to hold in your mind <clears throat> the 11th and 12th stations of the cross. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Jesus dies on the cross. They're over there, I think, if I've counted correctly. And if you can't see them from where you're sitting, you can look at the cross behind the altar and see our Saviour hanging there, or look on him in your mind's eye. Jesus is nailed to the cross. Jesus dies on the cross. I'm sure you've heard plenty of sermons on what it means to be salt and light. Salt is a preservative, it's a flavouring, it can also sting and be an irritant and I'll leave you to ponder what it might mean for salt to lose its saltiness. But the call to be light, on the other hand, appears to be more straightforward. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So our works of charity and our holy living should be shining examples of the love and goodness of God, showing our neighbours what God is like and drawing them to him. While fasting and prayer probably receive the most attention during Lent, it's easy to forget that the third traditional pillar of this holy season is almsgiving. I was taught at primary school that the money that I saved from not buying sweets could be given to charity. The trouble was I've never really been a big sweets fan, so I managed to wriggle out of that one. But this gospel reading should challenge us to take charity and holiness more seriously. We're not doing it just to be nice. We're doing it as part of our Christian vocation to demonstrate the love of God, the self-giving and self-sacrificing love of God, the love of God that was supremely demonstrated on the cross to which Christ was nailed and from which he shines victorious, defeating death and the power of sin by the outpouring of his love glowing and radiating that light of love, the love which we receive and are then called to share as widely and liberally as we can. So can I challenge you then as we contemplate the 11th station of the cross to, in a sense, be nailed there with Christ and so shine with him. Now in our first reading from Philippians, St Paul counts all things as loss that is, his past life and the things of this passing world, the sort of things we're asked to lay aside during Lent. Instead, he desires to know Jesus and the power of his resurrection, which we will celebrate with joy at Easter. But before we get there, he also desires, and challenges us to desire, to share in Christ's sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that if possible, we may attain the resurrection from the dead. To get to Easter, we must pass through Lent and Holy Week and die on the cross of Good Friday. Our sufferings and the sufferings of the world, big and small, are not in vain. Indeed, they are made precious because in them we share Christ's suffering. Jesus suffered to share in and take away our suffering. When we suffer, we are not alone, but come closer to the Lord who suffered to save us. And Jesus died to rise again. If we die with him, we will rise with him. What does it mean then to become like him in his death? 
First, we die with Christ in baptism, dying to our old lives to be made new by him. Second, we die daily when we turn away from sin, from our selfish desires, and turn to Christ to be forgiven by him and given new life. And finally, at the end of our lives, when we die and go to be with Christ in the place which he has prepared for us in the Father's house, to await the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. So as we contemplate the twelfth station of the cross, let us resolve this Lent and every day to die on the cross with Christ, that we might also rise with him. Jesus is nailed to the cross, be nailed there with him, and so shine with him. Jesus dies on the cross, die there with him, and so rise with him. Finally, do not give up. The way of the cross is long, and a third of the way through this holy season, Lent may seem to stretch endlessly on, and Easter seem unreachably far off. St Paul encourages us, however, to keep on striving, to keep on stretching. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. The work is done, the victory won. But with St Paul, we must press on to make it our own because Christ Jesus has made us his own. To be nailed to the cross and to die there with Christ is hard, but as St. Augustine said, it is better to hobble along the road than to run on any other route. Even in the small things, every time you manage to resist that second biscuit with your tea, and every time you offer a friendly smile to the stranger from whom you might otherwise have turned away, you are one step closer towards the goal, towards the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus.